In today's first reading, my friends, we, say, we see a list of the apostles, and they said all devoted themselves to prayer. And then in the gospel, it's the same thing. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, and then we see this prayer that he actually prayed. And I'd like to reflect on that, my friends. Why do we pray other than asking for something? You know, we, we're good at, for that. I want to pray for this intention or that intention. And they all may be very, very, very well intentioned and all very, very good. And that's a good thing to pray for. But what else does prayer do and why is it so important to engage ourselves in it? And I'd like to list three things, my friends. But for these things to work, it needs to be part of our lives. It can't be something we mutter on our way to work. There needs to be set times, and we start small, two to three minutes, but it needs to be set times that are carried in day in, day out. So it's that faithfulness to a period of time, and over time, then these three things take effect of us. Eric Lydell, he was the Olympic champion that was the hero, Chariots of Fire, I'm sure most of you have seen that beautiful movie. He didn't want to run on a Sunday because it was against his faith. He was known as a man of great integrity. And you know, you ask yourselves, where did he get that integrity? Somebody who's willing to live as they believe. That's what integrity is, right? And we all want that. Every single one of us in the church want that, be people of integrity. How did he get it? After the Olympics, he went as a missionary to China, and he was a prisoner. And somebody wrote a book about his behavior in the prison camp, and they said, you know, he had enormous hardships, and yet he always maintained his integrity. But before six o'clock every morning, Eric Lydell and another prisoner would sit at the corner of their little bunkhouse where they, had, where they were, and they would pray, and they would pray. He got his integrity, he got his strength from prayer. And that's where it comes from, my friends. The second thing it does is it gives us certitude or conviction in our faith. You know, we want to believe with certitude. We want, to, we want convictions. We need that, my friends. We need to have a convincing, certitude, absolute faith. There was a poet, a German poet, who was traveling through the outskirts of France, you know, with the outside of Paris, they went on like the countryside and things like that, and they came across this beautiful cathedral. And the friend of the poet said to him, they said, Heinrich, why can't people build like this anymore? And Heinrich, without hesitation, replied, in those days, people had convictions. Today, we have opinions. It's true, isn't it? They had convictions. They believed in what they were doing. You know, we have opinions today, don't we, my friends? Oh, I want this, I feel this. No, we need convictions, don't we, in what we believe. And it comes from prayer. A steady dose of prayer over time makes our faith convincing within us. And finally, it does something else. It gives us hope. My sister called me the other day and she was telling me about a graduation speech at the University of Texas. Admiral McRaven, some of you may have seen this. You know, graduation speeches can be deadly, my friends, you know. I mean, we all know that. We've all sat through many of them. This is wonderful. He was a Navy SEAL for 37 years. And he takes, he told these graduates from University of Texas 10 ways how they can change the world using examples from his SEAL training. And look it up online, McRaven, Admiral McRaven, M-C, capital R-A-V-E-N. It's very easy to remember these Irish names, isn't it, my friends? <laughs> but it's from University of Texas. It's, I'm, I think it's going crazy on the internet because it's such a, a wonderful talk. He said on Wednesday of Hell Week, they were paddling down this kind of swampy area and somebody was accused of not paddling correctly. And he said, I'm sure it was just a minor infraction. 
But anyway, they told all the seals that they had to stand in this swampy mud. It was late afternoon when they did this, all the way to sunrise the next day. Most of them were up to their necks in mud. After several er